Hey folks, welcome again back to the channel. I am Brian and today we're going to be going over this All Powers S2000 lithium ion power station. Now this is a 1500 watt hour lithium ion NMC power station. It does have a continuous rated 2000 watt pure sign inverter built into it with a 4000 watt surge. This power station retails at $1199 and right now currently on Amazon there's a $300 coupon. So that puts this power station roughly at around 60 cents per watt hour. It does have Bluetooth functionality built into it. You can charge via AC and solar at the same time and it does have four AC outlets up top rated at 2000 watts running or again 4000 surge for a brief period of time. You've got two USB-C power delivery 100 watt output ports and four USB-A ports and of course you do have your 12 volt car cigarette output port as well. And a very simple layout up front with three buttons. The first button will be to turn on your Bluetooth. The middle button is to turn on your AC inverter and the last button is to turn on your DC circuit. It does have an XT60 input for solar which is capable of 12 to 70 volts or up to 18 amps at 500 watts. And what you're going to get in the box with this unit is a pretty decent little carrying bag that carry all your cords and you're going to get of course your AC charging cord and you're going to get your DC charging cord so you got a 12 volt cigarette style to an XT60 and you'll also get some solar cable with MC for male and female to an XT60 input. And it also comes with, I'm gonna call it a dust cover, but a pretty nice little cover that you can use. So if you're gonna store this unit, say in your garage or in, in an RV or something, it is nice to have this to kind of keep it protected. So I'm going to be jumping straight into my reviews and showing you guys the tests that I did on this unit. But also at the end of this testing video, I'm going to show you folks another thing that All Power sent me, and it's their 400 watt solar panel. This thing is absolutely massive. It is nine feet long when you open it up. It's got five panels and it's actually weighs 50 pounds. So to call this a portable solar panel might be a bit of a stretch. You can get it in the back of a truck bed. It is it's absolutely huge, but got terrible weather today. So I'm not going to be able to test the solar on it today, but we're going to see how much I can squeeze out of the sun using the solar panel and see how much wattage we can put into this power station. So I wanted to test the actual usable capacity of this battery. So it is rated at 1500 watt hours. I hooked up my DC capacity tester, charged this thing up to full and let that capacity tester run until it was empty. When all was said and done, I was able to get 1238 watt hours pulled out of this battery, which equates to around 83% efficient. Next test, I wanted to see how much power the inverter uses without any load built in it. So basically the parasitic drain or vampire drive however you want to call it. So to test that, again, I charge this thing up to full, I turn the inverter on, I start up my stopwatch, and I let this thing run for 12 hours. When I came back, this unit was at 83%, so we lost 17% of the battery. That equates to around 1.4% per hour. Which... So I want to check to make sure that this does not have a DC cutoff function and that it will in fact run my cooler if I have to run it overnight without checking on it. Interesting thing to note is that this does have a dedicated DC button to where you can turn it on and it's supposed to turn on the DC circuitry. However, when I cut it off, and you'll see when I plug this in, it turns on my cooler and the DC light is not on. Now I can press it and the light cuts on indicating that the DC functions running. I can cut it off, but it still runs my cooler. So I'm going to set this cooler to 45 degrees so that compressor doesn't run continuously. So as of right now, it is 450 PM and I will check back in here tomorrow and see if that thing is still running. Well, getting it is 742 the next day and the cooler is still on. We're down to 76% on the battery. I believe we started at around 83%, so we didn't lose too much power. The issue still is that this DC button doesn't appear to actually cut on and off the DC circuitry, but the good news is that it actually kept the cooler running, which means there is no DC cutoff function built into this BMS. Okay, so the USB-C on this power station is rated at up to 100 watts output, and I can confirm that by showing you here that we are outputting 100 watts and inputting 99 to 100 watts on this Energizer power station. Let's make sure that this second USB-C is working. 
There we go. So both USB-C outputs are outputting 100 watts as rated. So this S2000 has a 2000 watt rated continuous running inverter built inside of it with the 4000 watt surge. And we're sitting right at around 118 volts with no load. So I've got two space heaters below this power station that you can't see. One is a 1500 watt space heater and one is a 500 watt space heater. So the two of these together should put us right at around 2000 watts. That's right at around 1400. 1800. So let's check the sine wave on this thing with a load on it. And we got a perfectly clean sine wave. So this does have a fairly loud fan, I will tell you that. So running at 1800 volts, and when I stop talking, I'll show you how loud it is at approximately two and a half feet away. So almost up to the peak rated watts, we're gonna make sure that this runs for at least five minutes. Okay, so we just passed the five minute mark. We're running 1812 watts, and we've dropped down to 113 volts. So this thing does have Bluetooth, but I found every time I try to go use the Bluetooth, I have to press and hold this Bluetooth button until it lights up green. And then I can go into the app, add a Bluetooth. Now the app is kind of bare bones. It doesn't have a whole lot of, of settings you can tweak on it, but it shows you your remaining battery time, your input and output wattages, and you can turn on and off the AC inverter and DC circuit board. But that's really it in terms of the features that you get on the app. So to demonstrate that pass-through charging does work, here you can see that I'm inputting 320 watts. I do have it charged up to my wall. The battery gauge is spinning. And the funny thing is when I have this plugged in, I actually have to turn on the DC button to get this circuit to turn on. I don't have to do that when it's not charging. This will slowly start to charge my energizer battery and I'm gonna turn on the AC inverter to turn on the little space heater. I'm inputting around 100 watts from the USB-C into my energizer battery station and I'm still charging. So pass-through charging does work on this. It does not have a UPS feature. So don't think that you can plug in an appliance to this power station and plug this power station into the wall and if power runs out, the battery will kick over. This does not have a UPS mode on it. So what are my final thoughts on this power station, not including the solar panel? Panel yet so I give it an, an okay grade you know it, it's 60 cents a watt hour at time of testing it performed well it, it passed every test um, the quirky thing was was the DC button not having to turn on the circuit to run my fridge the fans are a little bit loud and the Bluetooth app while it does have a Bluetooth app there's really no functionality in it other than you being able to see and monitor the battery capacity and you can cut on and off the DC and AC functions on this battery station you can see there's two handles on top and they could have made these handles completely flat and you could still get your hands underneath them. However, they put a little bump to these handles, which means that the top is not completely flat. And you can probably remove these handles. Actually, I do see a couple of bolts on each side. So you could, you know, if you needed a flat top, you can take these off. But it would have been just that much better if they would have just used flat handles instead of these raised up ones. But as far as actual testing and, you know, it passed everything. Decent capacity testing score. Um, it ran my cooler overnight. And testing the inverter out on this thing, you know, it got pure sine wave. It ran around 1800 watts fine. The fans kicked on. It was a little bit loud, but that's to be expected running 2000 watts. However, if you're if you're on a budget and you need a larger power station, this might be worth taking a look at if they continue with that $300 off coupon, bringing this thing down to 60 cents a watt hour. But there's my opinion on this power station. Let's take this setup outside with this massive 400 watt solar panel and move forward in time when I have better weather and we'll see how well this solar panel does with this battery station as a pair. So I finally got some good weather here in Texas. So we're gonna be able to test out this 400 watt solar panel. It is way too massive for me to open up here in the garage. Again, it's about nine feet long once you fold this thing out completely. But just a quick few specs on it. It is IP67 waterproof. It's got a nice weatherproof zipper around this compartment that holds all of the solar cables that you'll need to hook up to your battery station. And the open circuit voltage on this panel is 45.3 volts with a maximum power current of 10.6 amps and the short circuit current is 11.45 volts but with all that said I really just want to get this thing outside and test it conditions aren't absolutely perfect 
but they hardly ever are. So let's see how many watts this thing can put into the S2000 power station. Right now on Amazon, it's MSRP is $699 for this panel. There is a $120 off coupon that you can apply, which I think brings this thing down to around $579.99. But let's see if it actually performs and gets anywhere near 400 watts. Now, before we get it outside, let me show you how I'm going to hook it up to the... So it comes with attached to the actual solar panel MC4 connectors. All Powers sends you MC4 to XT60, and then they also send you an MC4 to different barrel connections. So you've got a 5521 barrel connection, and you also have a Jackery Type 7909 barrel connection. So you can use either one of these cords for whatever power station you're going to be using, but for this application, since that S2000 has an XT60 input, I'm going to be using this cord. This is 12 gauge wire, so it should handle three to 400 watts absolutely fine. All right, so here we have the setup. I kind of ran out of room out here in the backyard to get this massive panel unfolded, but the setup should provide the most optimum angle to the sun at this time of year at my house. You can see up in the top right corner, I got an, about an inch of shading. So I'm gonna wait a few minutes until that gets completely covered by the sun. And we're gonna see how many watts we can pull out of the solar panel. But let me show you the conditions of the sun right now. So we do have quite a few little wispy clouds up there so this isn't going to be optimum conditions however this is a real world scenario i'm going to zoom you in here on the screen of the power station and hopefully we can get a good readout but the power station is 49 percent capacity so it should take full solar we're going to plug this in and see what we can get so right off the bat around 220 watts 225. So we're slowly climbing up, folks. We're almost at, yeah, 245, 250, 260. Well, folks, we're up to 330 watts now, which is actually really good considering the amount of clouds that are up in the atmosphere right now. And we're still kind of hovering around 325, 330 watts. Overall, I'd say this, this solar panel will easily put out close to the 400 rate of watts if you are in perfect conditions, of which I am far from. Well, folks, that's my review on this All Powers S2000 and the 400 watt solar panel that goes along with it. Um, overall, both products performed adequate. They performed very well. Uh, the only quirk with this power station was the DC function of it worked without me actually turning on the DC button when I was doing my compressor test. Other than that, that was kind of the only little quirky thing about it. Um, the fans are loud. If you want to get a power station to put next to your nightstand on your bed while you sleep, this probably isn't the one because it is fairly loud, but it still performed very well. It got up to all of its specs that it's rated for. Solar panel did excellent. I will tell you that because again, I'm in really difficult conditions to test solar panels right now with all of the high level clouds that I have today. And with it getting up to around 330 watts, um, I think that's an absolute win for the solar panel. But gang, I will leave a link to both of these products in the video description below if you want to check them out for yourself. But overall, I think they performed very well. But until next time, guys, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon. Take care.